we're going to do a quick refresher course on how to name acids and bases. Uh, this should be something that you already know how to do, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, don't forget, anytime you have anything that ends in 8, whether it's per 8 or just 8, you're going to change the ending of uh, that anion to ic acid. So, for instance, chlorate changes to chloric acid. Perchlorate changes to perchloric acid. Nitrate changes to nitric acid. Uh, anytime you have a polyatomic ion that ends in ite, you're going to add us to the end. So, therefore, if you add uh, chlorite, it's going to change to chlorous acid. Hypochlorite would be hypochlorous acid. Nitrite would be nitrous acid, so on and so forth. The only time that you actually put hydro out front is if you have a single element, meaning not meaning not a polyatomic ion. So for instance, if I had HCl, uh, I'm going to call that hydrochloric acid. So where I had chloride to begin with, just Cl minus, uh, I'm going to change that to hydroic acid. So making that hydrochloric acid. Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. Uh, I have HBr. Since Br is by itself, okay, Br minus, I know that so since my anion is Br minus, I know that the anion's name is bromide. So since this is a single element, I know I'm going to put hydro out front, making this hydro, instead of bromide, it's going to be bromic, so making this hydrobromic acid. Okay. I take a look at this one. My anion, my polyatomic anion is sulfate. I know that 8 changes to ic. So this is SO4 2 minus, making this sulfate. Uh, and so therefore my acid name is going to be sulfuric acid. Okay, uh, let's pick another one here. ClO2, I know that ClO2 is chlorite. Oops, how about ClO2 minus? Okay. That's chlorite. I know that anything that ends in ite changes to us, so therefore this is chlorous acid. Okay, here's another one that has a single element. So my single element is phosphide, making this hydrophosphoric acid. And let's do another one here. I've got hypoiodite as my polyatomic ion, making this hypoiodous acid, because remember, ite changes to us, hypoiodous acid. So eight changes to ic, ite changes to us, and if it's a single element, it's going to change to hydroic acid. Uh, let's see here. Here's a couple where we can uh, go backwards. So, for instance, if I have perchloric acid, I know that my anion was perchlorate. I know that my anion formula is ClO4 minus. And so, if I'm going to make this an acid, I know I'm going to add H to the front. I'm going to add enough. Uh, of my H's to cancel out this negative charge, so I just need one, making this HClO4 minus. Okay, uh, if I have hydrosulfuric acid, I know that hydro tells me it's a, this is just a single element. So therefore, I know that my single element is sulfide. My element formula is going to be sulfur with a two minus charge, since sulfur is in group 16. I know that it is a 2 minus charge, so now I'm going to add H to the front. I have S on the back, and I have to add enough H's to cancel out this 2 minus charge, giving me H2S. Okay, we'll do one more. Uh, iodous acid, I know that, um, let's see here, 8 changes to ic, ite changes to us, so therefore my polyatomic ion had to be iodite, okay? Um, so if iodate is IO3 minus, then this has to be IO2 minus for iodite. Uh, my anion formula, well, that should actually go there. This is iodite 
And so therefore my acid formula is going to be HIO2. All right. Let's take a look at uh, writing the formulas for bases. Um, remember, as we learned in the last unit, I know that my bases are um, going to be anything that make a hydroxide in water. And I know that I have strong bases that we memorized in the solutions unit, which was lithium down and around to calcium hydroxide. So I know that bases make hydroxide, so therefore a lot of things that say hydroxide are going to be bases. So for instance, I have strontium hydroxide. I know that strontium is SR2+. Uh, I know that hydroxide is OH-1, so therefore I have to have two hydroxides to cancel out the two positive charges that strontium has. So therefore this is going to be SROH2. Okay, lithium hydroxide is in group, lithium is in group one, so it has a positive one. Hydroxide has a minus one, so this is just going to be LiOH. Okay, uh, now I know all of these are hydroxides. All I have to do to name these is just name the metal and name the poly, uh, polyatomic ion. Okay, uh, even though there's two of these here, I'm not going to put di or bi or, or two or anything like that in the name. Because I already know that magnesium has a 2 plus charge. Since magnesium has a 2 plus charge, and since hydroxide has a minus 1 charge, I already know that my formula is going to be MgOH2. There's no need to put dihydroxide or bihydroxide or anything like that. So all I'm going to write here is just magnesium hydroxide. That's all I have to do there. So you can probably look at these next two and tell me what those are. I have sodium, I have hydroxide, therefore my compound is called sodium hydroxide. I have barium, I have hydroxide, so therefore my, my, uh, the name of this would be barium hydroxide. That's going to wrap it up for this portion of the notes. Um, I would go ahead and practice these just to get back in the habit of naming acids and bases, and we're going to take a look at those in the rest of class. Thanks.